know all the beautiful souls watching this program today. We are here again with another thrilling episode of our young author Avi Puri's uh, success and we are going to celebrate his success as a young author with his strongest pillar, his mother, Mrs. Ankita Puri. We extend our deepest gratitude to Avi's mother for her unwavering support and invaluable insights. Her dedication and love has not only shaped Avi's journey, but it has it or but also serves as an inspiring example for all of us here. To the parents, students, and teachers who are watching us today. Thank you for being a part of this incredible community because today you're going to get a lot of insights from an encouraging parent and a lot of inspiring messages from an uh, inspiring parent. So uh, that is Mrs. Ankita Puri, whose encouragement and belief is, you know, has made a lot of difference in Avi's life. So I, I believe that as a parent, we must continue to nurture uh, dreams of our kids and support them in achieving great success. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Ankita Ma'am, for coming on this platform, taking out time and, uh, you know, coming on this platform and giving uh, your, your valuable advice. So welcome to this podcast. Thank you, Simran. And that was such a beautiful welcome. And uh, I really appreciate uh, for all the encouragement you, you are, your entire team is giving to these young leaders. And it's a pleasure to be with you here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, now our audience is watching you. We want you to introduce yourselves and share a little bit about Avi's uh, childhood, his background, like, you know, and what made you decide to, you know, encourage Avi to enter into this becoming an author, this journey of becoming an author. Certainly, yes. Um, in quick liners, um, I am a businesswoman and I own a company which is into outreach and uh, writing a book was a passion turned into reality uh, and uh, uh, there's a success, uh, you know, flags which kept on coming in as soon as my, my first book was launched, eventually became an Amazon bestseller, uh, got me an opportunity to speed at TEDx, and it's endless. And while I was growing in my life, I didn't realize that there's someone who is constantly watching my growth uh, from the microscopic lenses, and that was Avi. Um, Avi uh, very minutely observed the kind of efforts which is required to achieve a task, um, especially writing a book, and the kind of rewards you get, you know, the kind of uh, empowerment you get from the society. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it worked a lot for him and his little mm -hmm. mind started giving him an indicator that mm -hmm. uh, this is something which he should also aspire for. Mm -hmm. uh, since his babyhood, Avi has been quite an independent child. Mm -hmm. um, uh, being an expat in Dubai, we were quite in working independently from our personal chores to our social setups. And we kind of uh, got a custom, accustomed with that lifestyle. And being an independent uh, baby, turning into a toddler, growing up into a tween, um, he was always ready to take up challenges. And he took it full wholehearted uh, efforts. Um, either I'm going to win or I'm going to learn. That was his motto. And he always kept his best efforts forward. A uh, very strong believer of God and was always under the uh, strong faith that God is watching me or God is by my side. Uh, when he saw this, in his words, as quoted by him, the fame coming through Mama's life because of the book writing. Mm -hmm. And I still remember it was my launch day. And on the stage, he was holding those trays to be given uh, you know, the book is to be given to the chief guest and all. He felt if I, if today I'm standing with the tray here, one day I should stand with the book here. And uh, that triggered his insight. Uh, it was just a thought. And uh, I, uh, as a parent, I'm sure many of you will attest to it. Sometimes we don't give a heed to their small little dreams uh, because uh, these are influential dreams and the life is a bubble life. Uh, but when he insisted, I gave him two weeks, two weekends precisely to think about it and get back to me. And uh, he was consistent in his. And uh, he became uh, more in, more more committed 
towards writing the book. And that's when his journey started towards being an author. Um, he underwent a systematic boot camp, although it was initially hosted by me at home, uh, because I never wanted to have a sorry face after walking few steps initially. Uh, but the child was very much committed. And he took every step very sincerely. And then I handed him over to his book coach, uh, Dr. Kailash. And uh, then the whole journey started and you have been a live witness to that journey um the kind of commitment he writes uh commit the commitment with which he writes the book uh, it, that was commendable i should say because he burnt his night night lamp mm -hmm. uh, there were times when he was awake till three o'clock and there was a school next day um, he volunteered himself that he will go and speak to the class teacher that he wants to take an off for one day because he was almost chasing the deadlines of book submission. So mm -hmm. uh, his journey of becoming an author is far more interesting than publishing the book because it changed his whole personality mm -hmm. and uh, it gave a holistic development. And being a child, he learned how to, what is dedication, what is commitment, what are deadlines and what is a sincerity, sense of ownership. So. It, was, it is a holistic development for my child. The day he became an author, um, it, it's it was it's a beautiful exercise. I must say that I really cherish to see that a lot of uh, um, you know a lot of personality traits got imbibed because he was writing a book. So I'm very happy and I'm overwhelmed at times looking at his uh, at tender age because his first book was launched at the age of nine. So that's something which I really am thankful to God. Yeah, wow. thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And the way you have supported him is just remarkable, ma'am. So he's a blessed child and he has got the best support from you. You know, definitely uh, he's going to carry forward this in his success. He's he has learned so much, he's got inspiration from you, and he's a shining example in this world, like you know, that uh, he he's a young leader now. So definitely he is going to show it and I found him uh, uh, very very helpful when he told me that uh, he wanted even other kids to write down so that is the quality of a leader like you know he has those leadership qualities and we can already uh, it's already visible in Avi so I'm very proud to see that uh, you know your bond with him is so amazing and <laughs> I'm sure uh, parents must be looking for this kind of bonding with their kids, right? When they listen to your uh, bonding about you and I. Thank you. Okay, ma'am, now, yes, you already actually answered my next question. How has this uh, becoming a published author impacted Avi's confidence and self-esteem? And now you can tell me uh, what kind of changes do you observe or what have you notice uh, when he's interacting with his friends with his teachers after he became a published author do you see any changes in him yes indeed um i see a more confident version of my son um, who walks with a sense of achievement when he goes but at the same time what new which was not expected out of um, this little soul was a sense of responsibility Mm -hmm. um, I still remember the day when he was, uh, uh, you know, going for campaigning for his uh, head head boy mm -hmm. of the primary. And in his manifesto, he took the initiative to say that I want to launch an author's club. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a totally his thought process, his brainchild. Mm -hmm. And when I spent time with him, that son, you have promised something. How is the way out to it? Because you're not just doing it for to win and become a head boy. It's a manifesto which needs a, a walkthrough plan. And yeah. to my surprise, as you rightly said, he wanted others to write too. Mm -hmm. um, because in uh, our higher education, uh, if mm -hmm. you have written a book, mm -hmm. uh, it brings some kind of pointer system to your application process. And he said, Mama, everybody wants to apply to a good university. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is, if I can be an author, I can at least create a few more from my school. Mm -hmm. And that was his intention. And he successfully launched the Authors Club, of course. Um, his position of... Uh, you know, representing the school from uh, from a leadership perspective has got changed drastically. He's not looked up to as a 10-year-old uh, child, but he's definitely looked up now, uh, you know, a person who can do a lot to, mm -hmm. to, to represent the school on different podiums. And he himself feel a, 
a sense of uh, a sensible response to every action which needs to upgrade the children of his uh, peer circle or juniors or maybe I don't know if he has a reach out to seniors as well mm -hmm. um, but yes once uh, my son became an author I realized um, mm -hmm. there is a, a change for good in his personality uh, without disturbing the the innocence of being just yeah. a 10 year old child that's the beauty of this achievement I should say and I'm very happy there wow this is uh so nice to see that that positive influence uh we can see he has created impacted positively on others and as well as for himself and I'm sure everybody would admire Avi for this and forever you know he will be a uh, a very famous figure because he will be looked upon and as he said I need to maintain that because students are telling me in, in this interview since I've already made an achievement I need to maintain that so I cannot come below that like I have to maintain that or I have to go ahead of that so that's uh, something nice uh, we can we can that's a message which can, we can give if we can do even other kids can do right so we has uh, proved that uh, very well wonderful uh, thank you so much for that sharing uh, Ma'am, now can you tell me um, what are the, how are the skills uh, that Avi has learned in this uh, process of writing in this workshop and how is it going to benefit him in the future? Because now uh, there are new generation skills which, you know, children need to learn apart from the academics, right? So these sure. are skills uh, which can be learned only through such programs because, uh, you know, creative writing comes in when you get get into the depth of it then only when can you get creative as he as he told me sometime before that with this program he activated his creative mind which is what i liked very much he touched upon something which you know we could not uh, tell everybody but we did it and he could realize that it was done for him. so how has how these skills will help him in the future uh it's a very very great question i should say and it's very important for uh, for a learned parent mm -hmm. to address to such questions when it comes to, for their own children. Um, uh, I will only talk about Avi from the perspective, as you rightly said, his creative mm -hmm. uh, mind has, has improved or I should say has been polished. Mm -hmm. um, once, as, as soon as he started this journey of becoming an author, he became a bit more expressive rather than just beating around the bush or you know fumbling with uh, situations or trying to ignore or being shy and silent though he was never a shy child but there were situations wherein he would avoid mm -hmm. opinionating himself but yeah. but with this his expression power became more finer he started paying attention to details before even you know jumping into any conversations which is very crucial yeah. um as as we all agree that this particular generation uh, generation alpha for that matter um, is 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 living on a moment of snap, you know they for them things happens for for a snap moment and then the moment changes. So that's mm -hmm. how Snapchat is picking up everywhere, mm -hmm. already flourishing everywhere. Uh, for them, uh, getting attached to the details is a challenge, and um, if you if you have have a, if you have developed a process of uh, fiddling or working out with your rapidly generated thoughts in your mind, mm -hmm. bring them down, either write or type. You're actually spending time with that content, which means you're slowing down and that snap moment is increasing. And that's where the details comes into picture. Mm -hmm. So for students who who are become who are becoming authors or who are writing, not using any AI but their own brain cells. Research yeah. is one thing, AI is another thing. But yeah. being an author, you have thoughts and ideas. You read a lot. You you. you... you are it in your own way. You are actually experiencing, you know, expressing the idea in your your version. And as you grow and grow in your career in future, when you 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 take up a higher education or you take up roles, you have already acquired the leadership skills within you. You you know how to present your opinion. You know how to form an opinion before presentation. You have you know how to form an opinion because 
to form an opinion, you know, there's a lot of homework needs to be done. So that research, that, uh, you know, setting your lenses in that direction needs no extra efforts. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. All you have to do is what you did as an author, you have brain, your, your brain has been trained how to do it. So with Avi particularly, I see a difference, um, even his subject, um, you know, he picks up signs and it becomes a storytelling for him. I mean, when we pick up subjects, like I, how I said for signs, uh, you know, difference between white blood cells and red blood cells, he's such good orator now that he can he can do a storytelling on how, how a heart functions. You know, he can yeah. actually... Uh, tell tell he, he he this is how we prepared for his finals mm -hmm. where he said okay I can see a red tomato and a white <laughs> tomato and they're holding uh, you know a thyroid <laughs> glands so oh. the more they the more oxygen and the more they carry they are very happy and so he's, oh. that's the creative side of his mm -hmm. and same thing he drew as a diagram so I saw what a difference when he started paying attention to finer mm -hmm. details you don't have to mug it up the yeah. entire process is in a form of a story in his brain. And I give this back to, to the book writing. I have no other person to owe this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Now I can understand that uh, the parenting approach, uh, your parenting approach is now going to be a model for all those who are watching us. They'll definitely uh, follow you. And uh, through Avi, uh, definitely the message has already gone. So... This is so amazing to hear, like, you know, science subject is also being learned in the form of a story. Like, this is so, so creative. Like, I have never imagined in my teaching career that science subject can be taught. So, this is so true. Like, and he's applying it basically. The, he has really become so creative that is, this application is very important, right? In, and he's applying it in other subjects also. It's wonderful. So, ma'am, now I want you to give an advice like, you know, parents want to enroll their kids in so many courses. Like I have seen parents telling me, my child goes to coding, abacus, my child is going for a dance class, my child is going for a tabla class, or child is going for, you know, so many courses. So <clears throat> how do you, how can the parents assess, like, you know, this creative writing workshop, how will it help them? Like, how do they decide? Uh, especially I'm talking about the budget uh, point of view, if you could highlight something. Because these are extra, these are the next generation skills and these are the extra curricular activities which for, for which parents need to budget. Like, educational costs have gone up high, we know. But how do they balance? Like, how did you decide, like, you know, I need to invest in this kind of uh, a program wherein uh, and you got such amazing results so uh, just a message for them sure sure yeah. um yeah, i i learned it and i'm uh, quoting it as i learned because i i truly empower this statement once an author always an author it's it's a very strong statement now why i say it's strong because we spent so much of money to 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 finish from you know the k-12 education mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. from nursery to 12 we put money because we know mm -hmm. once you finish schooling you are a school graduate forever yeah. we put so much of money to finish our engineering for four years so we are once we paid once you have studied the four years you're engineer forever how is not becoming an author how is it different once you pay for this skill or for this position or this title this title is for you forever for the rest of your life no one can take yeah. away this title from you no matter you write one book and you relax for the rest of your lifetime but you are an author for the lifetime so this title no one can take away so from investment perspective it it, it does require some kind of planning yeah. but at the same time it should not be counted as what is my return of investment because here the return is not one time here the return is lifetime so as a parent, we have to take up a call and we have to step up and take up a decision that if if my child can go and learn tabla every summers, can my child go for, for a couple of weeks or days or workshop duration and become an author for the lifetime? I think the answer will automatically reflect in the minds of vice parents, one thing. And secondly, uh, it, it makes a difference when these achievements are acquired at a young age. Because as we grow, the nitty-gritty of life is so complex. Mm -hmm. The the achievement task becomes um, on top priorities that these, you know, passion starts taking back seat slowly and gradually. Um, not that that's wrong or right, but that's the way life is. 
um, we start gaining more responsibilities with age comes you know we have to bring bread to our mm -hmm. platter so we start subsidizing you know we start pressing out our uh, passion about writing or something mm -hmm. right. so this is the only age when these children have no liabilities except putting efforts mm -hmm. and that's the best they can give back to you as a parent give them the platform of creative writing and as the name suggests this creativity will will pay them for the rest of their lives in different spheres not just academics in different spheres they will go for they will become entrepreneurs they will become solopreneurs they might become get into research you pick up a field where creativity is not needed and that's if that's your option then don't go for it but if you do not have any such field where mm -hmm. creativity if, if the base is a necessity, then I don't I don't recommend any parent to think twice. Should they come forward for this uh, camp or not? They should give uh, you know give a uh, give a platform to these children because they are, cannot take decision right now. Right. All they say, Mama say one two three and shoot, and we will start running. Just say which direction we are running. <laughs> they will run. Yeah. After some time, they will slow down because they might realize something. And that's where the parents should sit down and think, okay, this platform, is it motivating? If yes, what else can be done? So, you know, not at the start point, but somewhere the yardstick should, should be kept in mind that what's next? Should I invest more mm -hmm. if the child is enjoying? Or how do I make the best out of this, what the child has experienced? And I'm sure parents will learn that this is mandatory. If you ask me, it is mandatory to have a creative skills. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And you have shared such invaluable wisdom to all the parents. I deeply appreciate it because as a <laughs> as a teacher and a, a teacher saying the same thing and or a coach saying the same thing and a parent saying the same thing, it makes a lot of difference. So you mm -hmm. have sh shared uh, amazing, uh, you know, you have displayed actually amazing parenting skills, I can say. And you... Uh, have really taken the best decision and I can see that uh, you are very keen on you know leveling up uh, his confidence in the future and these skills are really really very important you've touched upon it so well ma'am and your message is definitely going to inspire all the parents so thank you so much and we are blessed that uh, you would understand what are we trying to give to the society through this program so what is vision of Dr. Kailash Finjani you have understood it so well Thank you so much. Uh, Ma'am, now just uh, uh, two more questions and then we can end. Uh, yeah, can you just uh, tell me um, what impact did Dr. Kailash Pinjani's guidance have on Avi during the workshop, like, you know, or during the program? What, how did it impact Avi? Dr. Kailash is a magic man. I'm telling you out of my personal experience also because he's my book coach as well. And, um, uh, two lines before I go to Avi. Mm -hmm. I am an early riser. I am never a late night person uh, mm -hmm. since my babyhood. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I enrolled for this uh, book writing myself mm -hmm. with Dr. Mm -hmm. Kailash, mm -hmm. his motivation was so strong. Mm -hmm. um, and his his messages were very ground, you know, grounded messages. But it was mm -hmm. so empowering that I, I identified a new version of me wherein I used to be, I used to write from 10 in the night until three in the morning myself. And I could not imagine myself being awake, fresh, writing a book at late hours, being an early writer. And I told him that, sir, you are a magical person. You created a new version of me in, in this couple of days. And um, that was my confidence that I told Avi that you're not going anywhere else because Dr. Mm -hmm. Kailash knows um, how to convert your best version out of you, what you are today. So, and that turned out to be true again, because uh, when Avi was under his mentorship, uh, mm -hmm. before that, Dr. Kailash spent one or two meetings with every child. That's his practice, I believe. Mm -hmm. Or if he did for Avi, I'm not too sure about that. But that was so helpful for Avi to develop a comfort with him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, he they never talked about book. They always talked about life things. And I don't know what the conversations they had. But the child opened up 
with yeah. him and that's the beauty of a book coach um, yeah. he created that uh, conducive uh, relationship with the child mm -hmm. and then abhi was uh, completely under the supervision of uh, not guiding to, again subject matter always remains with the author but dr mm -hmm. kailash has a very strong uh, sense of motivation and uh, consistency is the key he makes sure that even if you are busy so mm -hmm. which is what i saw in abhi as well he's a school going child mm -hmm. and school going children have exams have other activities which consumes their time yeah. but uh, he followed the same mantra that even if today is the day when you cannot write your brain is exhausted or you are drained out completely mm -hmm. at least open your uh, laptop or open up your pages look at what you have written for 5 minutes and give back the life that peace deserves and i saw we used to do that just for the sake of uh, what is uh, guru taught him uh, the mm -hmm. book coach taught him mm -hmm. and uh, when he used to do that i used to feel very contented that his commitment uh, is being taken care by dr kailash and uh, there were times when uh, abhi felt demotivated because mm -hmm. uh, he didn't save some part of his chapter or something something happened and uh, to to a mother i can only console and i can only say it's okay things i'll be fine think I'll do it again mm -hmm. i can just give him that warmth but dr mm -hmm. kailash was the person who you know who completely pushed him again and said so what what you wrote was not the best that's why the best me has taken it away from you <laughs> go back and write again and the, you know, he was filled with power again and he said okay i'm going to write better and and he actually write thousand he wrote thousand words extra than what he wrote in the last version mm -hmm. so uh, you know these small little instances um especially for children this is very important mm -hmm. and dr kailash has the magic to do that and uh, i bow down to him for all his uh, efforts he he takes for every individual author yeah. who is with him yeah thank you thank you so much ma'am uh this is so appreciating uh this kind of uh, you know appreciation when we get uh, from parents like you know we are motivated to do uh, you know in a better way it motivates us and it gives us a lot of happiness so thank you so much for that uh definitely uh, i will tell dr kailash finjani to watch this part of the podcast <laughs> because he will definitely be very happy that this impact he is creating because not all messages go to him like you know one on one after the book is done okay the author gives gratitude but this kind of uh, he will be definitely happy to hear like this much impact uh, has been created so that's great um, and even other parents who are watching us uh, they would Uh, get to know about Dr. Kailash Pinjani because they keep asking who is the coach, uh, who is the uh, which is which company is doing this all that. They need to know the background details and they are right on their part, right? Mm -hmm. So that's okay. So this will throw light on you know about Dr. Kailash Pinjani. We don't have to tell anybody <laughs> now. <laughs> Thank you so much. And ma'am, now could you describe a little bit about the role of the coach? Like me, I was there in the class. So. what was how effective did you find the teaching style uh, like how much does it impact the child's learning uh, the the teacher's teaching style in the class if you could talk oh, yeah. about my yeah my self oh, yes, yes. yeah the coach yeah um no uh, i i should mention this out here and i think we were just discussing uh, some time back mm -hmm. um binding these uh, uh you know some if binding these children on an online session um and that to for a creative thinking and a writing process you know wherein you are not in front of them physically mm -hmm. and um, they have all rights to switch off their cameras and say network glitch and blah 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 mm -hmm. um all his sessions were very very controlled mm -hmm. um i should say interactive mm -hmm. all right and as a coach uh you were able to engage them uh, sometimes in group and sometimes pick, picking up any one individual i don't know if you had some strategy behind it or it was just by 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 chance that uh, the ones who were trying to be you know he headless chicken we call it and you know, they're trying to <laughs> run away <laughs> you you were always there to pull the string and um, that's a beauty of um, your style and uh, connectivity connecting with the students online and uh, as as parent one of the parents i'm sure there were other parents who who the children were online but as a 
parent myself i never bothered to peek in and see whether he is doing something or not because whenever i attempted to do those surprise audits whenever your sessions were on he was completely into the session and i said okay the next time i'm going to do i'm going to get bashing from him but <laughs> can you stop peeping in otherwise you come and sit down next to me so that's where um, as a parent i was very happy that uh, that particular hour of his week was completely under uh, radar and control and engaging um he never came out stressed out never came out exhausted rather after the session he used to spend some more time i believe you were giving some task to to, yeah. to the children so um if the child continues the task without shutting down the system immediately that means uh, the session went very well yeah, and as a parent i was very happy i'm very happy even today i'm very happy with everything you guys do with um mm -hmm. even the book has been published now it's been the best seller but uh, the way uh, the whole team mm -hmm. uh, you know um simran you and the entire team especially you for yeah. sure because you are the one who mm -hmm. to whom we are always bothering us i mean we we go to <laughs> hey listen simran can you do this and there goes simran is always oh. ready to get an answer so stop <laughs> we are very sorry if we bother you too much no, uh, but all. that's but that's something which is uh, which is an amazing support these mm -hmm. kids have got from you mm -hmm. and uh, we, we are very thankful we are very thankful for uh, all your efforts and energy you put into these kids uh, weekly activities per se thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, blessed to be uh, with dr kailash punjani because you know when you have somebody on a mission uh, and you join that mission you know things happen we don't have to make it happen they happen because there is a divine energy flowing from somebody who is on a mission so i felt that i was also getting a powerful force you know the energy was flowing into me while taking these classes because i never thought for a second how am i going to conduct the online class i never never gave a thought i would have a discipline problem in the class i never had even once a thought from last you know the the number of batches i have taken it was only the outcome the children are going to enjoy and uh, the children also contributed uh, in that way so it's a two way process the learning happened because and probably the topic was like that like they didn't get bored like you know it was their involvement was always there so they have no chance to look even <laughs> here and there because dr <laughs> kailash had uh, kept them busy with so many activities so they had no way to step out but yeah it was interesting also for them so yes, and not just that even the follow ups which you were doing for submissions yeah. i remember when we were close we are nearing the closing date mm -hmm. um it was coinciding with some commitment of his school time mm -hmm. and uh, he mentioned this out to me that mama if i don't do this now Huh. then there's no next day with miss miss simran i said okay fine go <laughs> so you know that's uh, it's a very beautiful way of getting the things done from these children mm -hmm. uh and that's only because you were doing a very kind follow up and rigorously so they don't forget you okay. and they were obliged that another yeah. follow up has come you know they were and not the... irritated annoyed they were obliged uh -huh. oh my god how much we're making a teacher wait let yeah. us do this you know? let us oh my god that's so nice to know thank you thank you so much and uh, uh you made my day actually by saying this because this is what is our reward like finally you know if we can get to hear this that we have made an impact on the children and they will remember us they are always in our hearts all kids those who learned you know they will always be in the teacher's heart so teacher can never forget in fact hame apna heart bada karna padta hai sabko samane ke liye so very very grateful for your uh, these uh, you know kind words of appreciation thank you so much now my last question i'll not trouble you with any more one message for all the parents all the students teachers or principals vice principals the school authorities who are watching this podcast i want you to give a very powerful message to all of them about how these next generation skills are very very important the story writing because i want you to speak in perspective with perspective of the language uh, development like listening skills uh, uh, reading skills writing skills and speaking skills so how do you think this program will help in enhancing language so that parents teachers because you know we are proposing even these programs even in schools now so what is your advice to all of them on this because you have been in this journey how is it going to enhance the language is it going to be helpful sure sure I, i want every listener to go back rewind themselves go into gone years where when we were in school and we used to have painting con competitions poem competitions uh, you know all those competitions wherein we were actually spending time to 
bring out our creativity and then compete. The, eventually, when uh, things changed, the teaching pattern changed, technology started overriding. Now the technology is not future. It's the, it's the current present scenario. AI is mm -hmm. next to us. Uh, we do not in we are not getting enough time to to make, to retain those dedicated hours for such things eventually these things have become hobbies and hobbies have shifted to summer holidays so mm -hmm. in two months you're ex you're expecting a child in to to become creative in 60 days of cycle when in the rest of the uh, you know 300 odd days you are engaging the child with gadgets mm -hmm. uh, not by force but by by the necessity so if, if, if not today, you are going to walk further away from the creative angle of these, this generation particularly. So it is very important to take some new steps, engaging steps to bring them back to the creative side of their minds because creativity does not mean art. Creativity is a thought process. It's a skill which is used in every sphere of life, be it personal, social, or, or your professional. So as a parent or as a teacher, as as an as an owner, you you yourself as a student or a child, mm -hmm. for you, it is very important to to in, engage with such activities, because literature is 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 you know the the language the the what you write what you read what you speak, is never going to leave you. This is something which will remain with you till your last breath, and if you do not improve yourself if you do not upgrade your versions one day you will be overshadowed by those who are still using ai and chat gpt's kind of a setups to you know mm -hmm. to create an impactful uh, versions so i'm not saying that this will help you to compete with them but at least you can survive with peace yeah. that i am trained i'm not i'm not scared of anyone taking away the the jolly ride of technology i'm someone who has the offense of language mm -hmm. I'm someone who has their sense of creative writing and I can definitely survive whatever the era comes. Today, it's the digital world. Tomorrow can be the, uh, you know, the AI world and it, then it can be BI world. We don't know. Yeah. But as a human, where am I today? I am ready to survive for the, for the rest of my life because I'm acquiring this skill from practice. So if you do not uh, mm -hmm. take the first step today like as you said you guys are speaking to a lot of schools mm -hmm. it is very crucial for school kids um, to enroll for such activities because it's not just a language lesson or a period which they're studying every day mm -hmm. it's about creatively thinking and developing thoughts and ideas in your own version fictional or non-fictional yeah. no software can help you only your brain only your brain wow that's yeah. that's that's an amazing message and truly truly i'm telling you you are an inspiration to all the other parents who are looking for this kind of support uh you know this is really going to inspire them and you are an inspiring example for all the parents who are watching this podcast so thank you so much ma'am for coming and spending time and sharing you know your invaluable insights with all the parents and i'm sure this kind of dedication and love that you have shown for avi and his journey this is an example for all parents that they need to take action they need to encourage their kids into this journey bring them into this journey and your support uh, invaluable support is a uh, you know um, model you're a role model for all the parents there and i hope all the parents there have found this discussion very very inspiring so uh, please take all the notes from this podcast if you <laughs> if you visit again if you want to you know get more insights i think you must watch this podcast again because the more you uh, you know watch it again the more learnings you would have because uh, ankita ma'am has uh, she really believes in encouraging the dreams of our young ones because who are the future leaders and uh, they can, only then they can achieve uh, great heights of success or they can achieve extraordinary achievements. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I would like to thank my audience also to, uh, you know, stay connected. And uh, we are coming up with another engaging and inspiring, uh, you know, conversation. So thank you so much, ma'am. And we are looking forward for uh, you to come on this platform once again for more events uh, where we can see Avi rising up higher. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. All the best, everyone. Thank you.